Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. It's a constant source of bewilderment for me to observe the way so many of us struggle with the proper use of our language. I'm not talking just about grammar, although my all-time worst fingernails on a blackboard moment is when I hear someone say, I seen instead of I saw. Sometimes I will see a newspaper headline with an unintended meaning that the headline writer obviously didn't see until it was in the paper and too late to fix. Here's a new one I spotted just a few weeks ago in a small town paper near where I grew up. Local man gets seized parts back. Wow, I felt the guy's pain and I'm glad he's being made whole again. But you know what? It wasn't what I thought. The story made it clear that the authorities had raided his house and taken hundreds of what they thought were stolen auto parts. Turned out they were not stolen, and a judge ruled they had to be returned to him. Occasionally, careless use of the language is a product of someone who does not speak or write English as a first language. I'm thinking here of the packaging on some of the millions of products, quote, made in China, unquote. I just bought a jar of lotion for use on tired muscles. On the box are printed several claims about the stuff inside the jar. A must-have after a leg day at the gym. I don't think they set aside one entire day just for legs at the gym. I think whoever wrote it meant to say after a long day at the gym, but I could be wrong. The box also said the lotion is a, quote, excellent solution to relive stress after exercise. That's what it said. Relive, not relieve. Stress is tough enough the first time. Why would I want to relive it? Now that I've had a little fun at the expense of headline writers and Chinese copywriters, let me acknowledge and salute clever use of the language. I think some of the signs we see on shops, outside churches, and along the highway take witty writing to a level I admire. Here's one from a zoo. Do not stand, sit, climb, or lean on zoo fences. If you fall, the animals could eat you, and that might make them sick. Here's a restaurant sign in Great Britain. Fat people are harder to kidnap. Stay safe. Eat here. Many shop owners now provide bowls of water near their front doors for dogs. One sign was obviously all-inclusive. It said, water for your dog or for short people with low standards. We don't judge. you got to love that one. And speaking of dogs, how about the sign outside a gas station in Washington State? It asked, does a dog see a police dog and think, oh no, it's a cop? Here's another restaurant sign. Fast service, no matter how long it takes. And as you know, it sometimes takes quite a while. A sign spotted on a church lawn was especially appropriate during our long, hot summer. It said, it's too hot to keep changing the sign. Sin bad, Jesus good. Details inside. A sign in a public park asked a simple question, why are you littering? And offered four possible answers. One, I'm a jerk. Two, I don't care about natural areas. Three, mommy still cleans up after me or four, all of the above. Finally, how about this supremely confident advertising boast on a sign outside the shop of a national haircut chain? If we can't make you look good, you ugly. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.